So we're going to push on and just do a couple of examples before the end of the lesson here. And we're now going to be pulling everything together because there's not much point in just learning how to sketch those reciprocal graphs. They're not going to say to you, sketch the reciprocal graph and that's the entire question. That would be like part A of the question. What's more likely is this skill is now going to be used in bigger problems. So I've written here that if y is a function of x and y is another function of x, then the x values of the point of intersection can be found when f of x equals g of x. Now that sounds kind of confusing there, but all it's really saying is where two lines intersect, it's where the graphs, uh, the graphs intersect each other and it's where you can solve their equations. It's simultaneous equations. So really this whole thing is just saying here, it's just saying simultaneous equations. And at GCSE, what you'd have done with simultaneous equations is you probably would have done like this line and this line, and you would have said the point where they cross over is the solution to the simultaneous equation. We're now going to be doing instead with curved graphs and thinking about where they cross each other, and that's going to give us solutions to simultaneous equations. So let's just read this one that we've got. It says, on the same diagram, sketch the curves with equations y equals x, x minus 3, and y equals x squared, 1 minus x, and then find the coordinates of their point of intersection. So I'm going to start off by having a look at y equals x, x minus 3. First of all, what's the shape? Pardon? Positive what? A positive quadratic, so the shape is like this. The roots, anyone? X equals zero and three. The y-intercept? Zero. zero. Y equals zero. Okay, so we've got that first one there. Now my next one is x squared one minus x. What's the shape? Negative cubic. Good, it's a negative cubic, so it's gonna be that kind of shape. Negative cubic for this one. And what are the roots as well? Uh, zero. Yep. It's, uh, like, it touches the thing. Do you remember what we call that one? The, the, the re, re, a repeated root, yeah, okay? Repeated root. So I'm going to put a little times two there to show it's twice. And, and, one. and one. And the y-intercept is zero. No, because this whole thing here has to be equal to zero, and this thing is equal to zero when x is one, one minus one. And the y-intercept is also zero, okay? So I'm now gonna do a sketch of this, and I'm gonna draw both of them on the same graph that I've got. So I have a quadratic with roots at zero and three. Zero and three. So it's gonna look like this. Then my next one is going to be a negative cubic with a repeated root at zero and crossing at one. So I'm gonna do my repeated root at zero and crossing at one. Now it is going to come down, mm, this is a bit tricky for me to draw. First of all, I want that one to just come a little bit longer. So it's gonna come down, it's gonna repeat, and then it's gonna go like this. Now, the reason I know it's going to cross somewhere over here is because which do you think is going to be steeper, the cubic or the quadratic? The cubic is steeper. So because the cubic is steeper, I know it's going to cross here as well. So it's going to cross here, here, and here. And that's what it wants me to do. It wants me to find the coordinates of the point of intersection. It wants me to find this, this, and this. Correctly, you've already identified one of the points of intersection is going to be 0, 0. Because we can just see that. We know they all cross at 0, 0. So one of the points of intersection are going to be 0, 0. That's one of them. How do you normally find out points of intersections on graphs? What do we do? Simultaneous equations. So we're going to solve these two equations simultaneously. We're going to solve this equation and this equation simultaneously. So I have got, I'm going to make this and this equal to each other. In other words, x, x minus 3 is equal to x squared 1 minus x. I'm going to try and solve this. Andrew. Yeah, 
good. You can cancel an x on both sides, but if you ever cancel an x on both sides from an equation, x being equal to zero is a possible solution. And I think, did we come across that in a, something before? I think this maybe was with my other class. Because if you imagine here, if x is equal to zero, then you've got zero equals zero, and the equation is true, so it works. So we could cancel out x from both sides. I don't know if I want to. Yeah, I'm going to cancel the x from both sides. And when I cancel this x and I divide by x, that squared will go. That gives me a solution that x is 0. I might do it two ways of this so you can see both ways. So I'm now left with x minus 3 equals x brackets 1 minus x. I've divided both sides by x. How should I solve this equation? Zainab, what would you do? Yep. Put it all onto one side, so I'm going to expand it and then put it all onto one side. So that's x minus x squared. So I'm now going to put it all onto this side that we've got over here, possibly. Um, no, this side over here. Well, I can subtract x from both sides to start off with, can't I? If I subtract the x from both sides, I would get minus 3 equals minus x squared. So I'm actually probably not going to put it on one side. So what does that tell me that x squared is equal to? Okay, so what is x equal to? Plus or minus the square root of 3. Now, if I didn't cancel the x on both sides, I'm just going to write down what would have happened and show you how this would have been different. I'm going to do it in a different colored pen. If you don't want to write this bit down, you don't have to. But if I didn't cancel it out, I would have expanded this and had x squared minus 3x equals x squared minus x cubed. I've just expanded both sides of this. Then I can subtract x squared from both sides. So I would have minus 3x equals minus x cubed. Then I'd need to go a bit further, and I'm going to put the x cubed onto this side. x cubed minus 3x equals 0. And then I can factorize so that I have x, x squared minus 3 equals 0. Now you can see either x is equal to 0 or x squared minus 3 is equal to 0 which will come up with these two solutions that we've got here. So if you cancel the x, it's equal to 0. Otherwise, you keep it in there, and you'll factorize by x, and you'll still get that x is 0 as well. So that's the alternative way that you could have done that question. Now, we're nearly done here. We just need to find out the coordinates of the point of intersection. What's missing? What have we not done that we need to do? Pardon? The y value. We've only done the x values. We need to have the y values too. So I'm going to just get rid of this bit here. You don't necessarily need this, but you've got it if you want to look back on it. I'm now going to find out what the y coordinates are. Which do you think is going to be easier to use, this one or this one? The first one. The first one. I, I think, I, I don't know really. I think, I think either of them are going to be fine. I probably would do, I'm going to do the first one. They're going to end up the same, whatever. So I'm going to say here for the first, if x is root 3, y would be equal to root 3, root 3, minus 3. And now you know why we learnt thirds at the beginning of the year. Root 3 times root 3? Three. Three. And root 3 times minus 3 is minus 3 root three. 3. And now the other one is if x was negative root 3, y would be negative root 3 multiplied by negative root 3 minus 3. Negative root 3 times negative root 3 is 3. Negative root 3 times negative 3 is plus 3. 3 root 3. So our points of intersection are 0, 0. Then we have the x coordinate is root 3, and the y coordinate is 3 minus root 3. The comma just separates them, so I don't have to worry about that overlapping. And then the last bit that I've got is negative root 3 and 3 plus 3 root 3. Those are my three intersection points. And I think they seem sensible. OK, naught naught we were expecting to have root three. Well, root three is a positive number and three minus three root three is a negative number. That's corresponding to the fact we've gone root three along and three minus three root three, which is minus two point two. We've gone down and this one we've got negative root three and then we've got a positive number negative root three and then a positive number. So it all matches up with how we're expecting the graph to look. 
Last thing I'm going to do, and then we're finishing, finishing this lesson here, is I am going to put this all on Desmos to show you that we've got the right answer. And this is the kind of thing that I would expect you to be doing when you're doing these kinds of questions. So I'll freeze the board so you can continue writing that down. And I'm just going to type this into Desmos. So we've got x, x minus 3, and x squared, 1 minus x. x, x minus 3, and whoops. squared 1 minus x. OK, I'm going to just show you these graphs. So you can see we got roughly the right shape there. We've got the quadratic shape, and we had the cubic shape. And the points of intersection is where they cross over. So we have these two, two values here. That's minus 1.732. That is minus root 3. You can check that in your calculator. Let's check that now. Yep, it is. And let's do, what's the 8.196? Which is 3 plus 3 root 3. Yep, that is 8.196. The other point that they intersect is here at 0, 0. And then we've got this one. You can tell that it's a root 3, because it's the other one but negated. And minus 2.196 is 3 minus 3 root 3. Yeah, so we have solved that question. Now, I think if you were going to look back at doing this kind of thing in GCSE, I think you would have felt like, whoa, this is really difficult. And you've already built up so many skills over the last two months to be able to do these kinds of things. So you should be feeling really, really pleased of how you've done on these. We're going to continue with this next lesson. I'm going to set you a few questions like these for homework as well.